Okay. In this video, we're going to extend the previous introduced recursive least squares estimator, which I've entitled here as the vanilla recursive least squares estimator. What was the core ingredient of this estimator? It was basically a recursive processing of a new data sample Z or Z transpose, which we get as an observable in our regression vector. With this new data bit, we basically update our correction factor. Then with the updated correction factor, we can basically update here our parameters. This will be our estimation error. This estimation error will be uh, amplified by the correction factor and we will update our old parameter vector to the new one. And then we also update here our P matrix, which is basically our normalized covariance matrix, which is basically an indicator for how uncertain we think, or the estimator thinks, the parameter vector W can be estimated. Okay, so that was basically the outcome from the last video. And one property of this estimator is that we will basically consider all previous data steps or data points Z in the regression vector equally um, in weight. So that means that over time, we will basically do not forget something. However, in a recursive least squares estimator, sometimes it's beneficial to forget something over time because if you utilize this estimator for a very long time, let's say you have this actively running on some embedded computer whatsoever for days, weeks, or months, monitoring some technical system, then maybe the system itself uh, changes its property slowly over time and therefore it might be interesting to forget about data which we have obtained months ago because the system nowadays has some different characteristics. In order to take that into account, what we basically introduce in this video is the so-called exponential forgetting. And the exponential forgetting is basically an introduction of the weighted least squares estimator, which we have already introduced previously. The idea here is quite simple. So let's consider this is our time step k equals zero, so basically our current time step. And let's say we have here our data points in the past, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30 data points in the past. And what we do now is we say, okay, we want to weight our data sample at the current time step, k equals zero, with a weight of one. And then over time, or here backwards in time, we exponentially want to weight the previous time steps less, right? So exponentially decay of the weight over time with respect to the previous data samples. This can be formally expressed as our weighting matrix W, which you already know from the weighted least squares, as a diagonal matrix with the weighting elements lambda, so lambda is our forgetting factor, which I will introduce sh shortly, n minus one for the up to capital N previous data points, lambda n minus two, and so on to lambda, which would be the first uh, data point in the history, and one that would be basically our recent data point. Right, so this would be here k equals zero, and this would be basically k equals minus one, so basically if we are here and looking backwards into the past. And this forgetting factor lambda is in the range of zero and one, basically indicating that if lambda is very close to one, then of course all this entire power series in this diagonal matrix for the weighting term here would be basically just an identity matrix, basically meaning that this would be more or less like a flat line, so we would not have any exponential or specifically no exponential weighting at all. And conversely, if lambda is very close to zero, that would mean that this is decaying quite quickly and that would mean 
that previous data samples become much more irrelevant to us, so that means that we will forget much more quicker. Okay, so lambda towards one means we do not forget quick, lambda towards zero means we forget quite quickly. Okay, so much the idea, and now what we would do at this point is basically we want to combine the previous steps. So we want to use the derivation of the recursive least squares estimator, change it in that direction that we introduce this weighting term, and then do the entire derivation once again in the sense of the previous two videos. However, as the derivation would be quite similar, just introducing this weighting um, term here, we do not do it manually again, but I just provide you the final results of this derivation and then we will talk a little bit about that. So if you will go through the derivation, basically the three steps, so calculating the correction factor, the parameter update and the covariance update is practically the same and also the equations look very similar. So here our correction factor is P K times Z transpose K plus one and in the lower part of the fraction we get lambda, so our weighting factor, our forgetting factor, plus Z K plus one times P K times Z transpose k plus 1. So here we see just a minor change. This 1 which we had in the vanilla recursive least squares is exchanged here for the lambda. Then the parameter update itself, w k plus 1 is equal to w k. So that is exactly a copy of the previous one because the changes here especially with respect to the correction factor which we had previously. So correction factor times the estimation error yk plus 1 minus z k plus 1 times w k and then the update to the normalized covariance matrix pk plus 1 is identical to the identity matrix minus y of k times z of k plus 1 times pk and then times 1 over lambda. Okay, also here just a minor change that here we have 1 divided by lambda and here we have lambda which is basically missing at this point or where here we had a one. And yeah, so that's basically pretty much it uh, at that point. And so we can basically see that the recursive least squares estimator is pretty similar to the standard vanilla recursive least estimator in introducing exponential forgetting. And of course with the special case, if we set lambda to exactly one, we would basically go back to the standard vanilla recursive least squares estimator, so therefore this is the special case of the RLS, including exponential forgetting. We will utilize that technique in the next video to apply it to a technical example, how we can utilize exponential forgetting to track basically some parameters of a technical system and to see how this can be uh, encoded into Julia code. See you then in the next video.